This video is about Frank Freeman, and you can see from where I've put his picture here with all the other architects, he is regarded as one of the top architects, if not the top architect of the Brooklyn School. Frank was born in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and moved to New York worked for a minor architectural firm for a couple of years and then he started off on his own and almost immediately started getting big commissions at the age of 27 in the 1880s he lived a long time he lived until he was 88 and he passed away in a retirement home in Montclair, New Jersey. Before he went to Montclair, he lived in Clinton Hill on Washington Avenue, which is right where there are a lot of other works by other architects from the Brooklyn School, but Frank Freeman never designed any buildings in this neighborhood, mostly in downtown Brooklyn and Brooklyn Heights. And he's also known for having designed a lot of buildings that are no longer existing and that were regarded as the top buildings of their time or of their type. So I've shown the five main buildings in Brooklyn that no longer are standing. The Hotel Margaret was in Brooklyn Heights, built in 1888, and it was being converted into condos when it, a fire broke out and destroyed the whole building, so it's no longer standing. And then uh, the Thomas Jefferson Association building was on Borum Place in downtown Brooklyn, and not sure exactly where on Borum Place, but uh, it was regarded as an unusual looking building, but significantly sized. And then the Germania Club House on Shimmerhorn Street was also in downtown Brooklyn, built in 1890. And that was for a club for people of German descent. And there were many uh, Germans in 1800s Brooklyn that, got established and were business people. And so they um, had a club for them to be with each other. And it was a massive building and it's no longer standing. It was demolished in the 1920s. It didn't stand there for that long. Then the Brooklyn Savings Bank was regarded as Frank Freeman's best work by some critics and it was on the northeast corner of Clinton and Pierpont in Brooklyn Heights, which is right across the street from his building, the Crescent Club, which is now St. Anne's School, which still does exist. So this was on the street right across Clinton Street to the east of where the Crescent Club slash St. Anne's School is now. And that was built in 1892-94, and it was demolished around the same time as Penn Station in Manhattan was demolished in 1964. Not a good year for uh, the demolition of uh, historically and architecturally significant buildings in New York. And it was this building at Penn Station that led the historic preservation movement and the creation of the Landmarks Preservation Commission in New York. And finally, um, the Bushwick Democratic Club. Now that was off in a separate neighborhood in Bushwick, east of Williamsburg. And that was for the Democrats to meet at. They would have clubhouses, good sized buildings. And it was destroyed by fire in the 1970s, which was in Bushwick, uh, the 1970s and 80s was really a rough period for areas like that of Brooklyn and the city in general. So he's known for these buildings that have been demolished, but there are still many good cases of 
buildings still standing, and we're going to show you them now. This is 84 Pierpont Street, the Herman Bear Mansion, designed in 1888-1889 by Frank Freeman. revival to the hilt including look at some of these details here on the front walkway Sunlight is okay. southwest corner of Pierpont and Henry, and look how big this house is. It is a mansion with no yard. Let's walk down the Henry Street. Look at it along this side. It almost looks like there's a separate building behind it, but it could possibly be part of all one thing. Regardless, even if it's not, look at this. The Herman Bear Mansion, 1898-1899, Frank Freeman, one of his few buildings and houses left, but you can see why he was regarded as numero uno in the Brooklyn School of Architects. I'm sure he and Louis Sullivan would have got along just fine. the absolute best Pokemon possible, you know? Like, it's going to be very difficult. Just can't stop looking at it. It's beautiful. This is Frank Freeman's former... Brooklyn Fire Department headquarters built in 1892. This is when Brooklyn was still its own city, merged with the other boroughs to form the city of New York in 1898. So really the city of New York hasn't been around that long as it is currently configured. But this is one of his key remaining works and uh, the AIA guide for architecture really is complementary of the design. Let me just read from the book. It says, this is a building to write home about. A lusty Romanesque revival monument with brick and terracotta details supported by granite and sandstone trim. A grand arch, main entry arch, a sturdy tower, a fine example of the New York branch of the Chicago School. You know, when it ranks it right up there with the Chicago School and Louis Sullivan, that's saying something. That's why uh, the AAA guide thinks that Frank Freeman is the number one architect for Brooklyn, from the Brooklyn School. And also he compares the arch, they compare the, compare the arch to H.H. H. Richardson, who started the whole Romanesque revival craze. So it sort of stands here as a lonesome uh, reminder of old Brooklyn, but it was still one of the best buildings that was here back in the day. And it's not too far from Rudolph Dowse's um, New York and New Jersey telegraph telephone building, 
which is only two blocks away, sort of behind. We're looking east across J Street. And I'll focus in on some of the architectural details with the telephoto. But Frank Freeman, City of Brooklyn Fire Headquarters, 1892 Romanesque Revival. Just another quick look back at Frank Freeman's Brooklyn Fire Department Headquarters on J Street in downtown Brooklyn with modern high-rises that have been popping up all over behind it. I should mention that uh, there's a for rent sign in the front door. Although there do appear to be lights on upstairs, maybe something or someone is in the upper stories. This is a really great detail, this window here. And a little uh, eyebrow window peeking out from the pitched roof, slate roof. And an Oreo window at the uh, base of the top of the tower. So if you love Romanesque Revival, this is your building. But what a arch. I should add that the address is 367 J Street. And that really looks like Louis Sullivan with all that uh, ornamentation on the terracotta. But uh, this is, you can hear the subway underneath. 365 and 367 um, on J Street in downtown Brooklyn, which is between Willoughby Street and Tillery, sort of at the uh, western edge of downtown Brooklyn, and it's across from. Uh, it used to be the Transit Authority headquarters, which is the building I'm standing in front of right here, which is a very large, nondescript building. Um, and right next to a part of Metrotech that was built, started in the 1980s. And let's see if we can see any other details as we walk around the side that we might not see from the front. And it looks pretty uh, ordinary from the side. Frank Freeman, 1892. New York City Fire Department, or Brooklyn Fire Department headquarters before Brooklyn became part of New York City. Romanesque Revival. Here's Frank Freeman's Eagle Warehouse and Storage Building. Built in 1893-94. And uh, it's one of his few buildings that are still standing. But it's one of the first buildings you see when you come into Brooklyn from Manhattan on the Brooklyn Bridge. Let's see how filming this Eagle Warehouse on the Brooklyn Bridge goes. This is Frank Freeman's, one of his few existing remaining buildings regarded as Brooklyn's finest architect, or at least among the top two or three. And this is a warehouse building that's now converted to condos. And there's actually a unit right up at the top that has uh, this clock 
has this window. I used to know somebody who lived up there. I think they rented this space. So this is uh, 94. Here's Frank Freeman's Eagle Warehouse close up. 1893 to 94. Just got to film some of this from the Prospect Park South Historic District, which is southeast of Prospect Park and south of Brownstone, Brooklyn. There are a lot of really nice Victorian homes in this area. It's surprising you are in the city and then all of a sudden, boom, you're in a small town America. So we're just going to go up Alamaro Road here. Look at this. Let's see. I have to find 1511. There's 1511. So this is Frank Freeman's house all by itself, apart from all of his other works. That's a beautiful house there too. So it's a lot different in style than his usual house. This was uh, built in the early 1900s. Frank Freeman, Prospect Park South on Alvaro Road, 1511. It's actually 1899 and the design style is Colonial Revival. All right, we'll ride back down here a little ways. He had another house in this area, but it was demolished. Looks like we have a film crew set up here. So to many people, this would look like any town in USA that has a Victorian district, but it's pretty unique for Brooklyn. This is Church Avenue, a large temple. We will ride down Marlboro Road down to Prospect Park, not too far away. Have to go across Church Avenue here. Okay. A little less quaint, but Still the same vintage. This soccer field area used to be like uh, the parade grounds where 
during the Civil War and afterwards the troops would practice marching. Frank Freeman designed and this was built in 1906. It was originally the, Cres the Crescent Club. Always tough to talk over the cars honking in Brooklyn and New York in general, but 1906, Frank Freeman, neoclassical, originally the Crescent Club, and now it's St. Anne's School. Here at the northwest corner of Clinton and Pierpont. It's actually on Pierpont. This is Frank Freeman's St. Anne's School at 129 Pierpont Street. No, at Clinton Street on the northwest corner. Built in 1906. And the design style is neoclassical. Let's take a look at it from across the street. And this is also such a very significant building here on the southwest corner. The it says Long Island Historical Society. I think it was called that a couple of years and then it was changed to the Brooklyn Historical Society. So we're really catching the last of the sun here. So look at these two architectural gems. This is a National Historic Landmark. And let's look back at Frank Freeman's building. And it's a prime example of New York architecture. Can you imagine this school in any town on a residential street. Talk about wow factor. But here it's just on a street packed with architectural great buildings. So fantastic. Here in Brooklyn Heights at the corner of Clinton and Pierpont Streets. In early January 2021. Well, this is what the YWCA in downtown Brooklyn looks like when it doesn't have scaffolding all over it. There's being a new building built around and over it. But this building was designed built in 1914, designed by Frank Freeman, in the, it's called the classical style, and uh, I don't know if it's still functioning currently with all the scaffolding around it, but it's the Y that uh, Bayer Bill de Blasio likes to use on a daily basis. At least he eschews a private club. But he uh, supposedly religiously works out in Frank Freeman's old building. And it, there's new hotels and high-rise apartment buildings right in the immediate area and over towards Barclay Center, this building down here at 300 Ashland. So 1914, at 50 Devon Street and Shimmerhorn Streets, downtown Brooklyn. Frank Freeman. the Frank Freeman building at this is at 180 Remsen Street 
in Brooklyn Heights, right outside of downtown. Frank Freeman designed this in 1914, and it's now St. Francis College, one of their buildings. They have other buildings along Remsen, looking west. And then there's Brooklyn Borough Hall, right down the street. And this brick building right nearby is by the Parfit Brothers, the Franklin Building.